The great search brought to you by DigiKey and eat a fruit every single week. Lady Ada, use a power of engineering to help you guess you find the things you want on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is this week's great search? Okay, so I'm working on this board that's going to interface with floppy disk drives like this one or like take this Apple II, disk two. And um, these are devices that need a lot of power. They need five and 12 volts, and they need them at a couple amps a piece because they're driving motors, spinning them around um, very fast. And um, you need to have a good clean power supply that's five volts and 12 volts. And, um, you know, historically you could get these power adapters that would give you both five and 12, and they would actually plug in even directly into the, um, uh, disk drive itself, but those are they're actually kind of expensive and they're very specialized. And so I thought in this design for this board that's going to interface with disk drives, um, Apple II or floppy or whatever, that instead of trying to like get this custom source five plus 12 volt power adapter, what I would do is say, you just provide me five volts, sorry, 12 volts at three or four amps. You can get 12 volt, three or four amp power adapters or USB C can provide 12 volts at three amps as well. And I'll give you the three, I'll give you the three, two to three amp, five volt output, as well as at 12 volts. And then, you know, you're good to go. You don't have to have like a dual supply. I'll generate the five from the 12. So let's go to the computer and I'll, I'll show. This isn't the final design, but I, I want to sort of draft it out. So you'd have um, your 2.1 millimeter DC jack. And again, you can get 12 volts power supplies very easily. I'll add an e-fuse here. We'll cover that probably next week on the great search about how to do e-fusing because I want to make sure that people don't plug in more than 12 volts into here and accidentally, you know, put 12 volts into the motor because I don't want to have a buck converter also for 12 volts. I'm, and I don't want to have a SEPIC. I don't want to spend the extra money when I'd rather have a fuse and just be like, hey, just make sure you use a 12 volt. I won't let you use anything else. And then I'll give you the five volt um, high current as well. So there's USB-C, but again, USB-C does not it, even, you know, yes, if you have a power delivery setup, you can kind of guarantee getting five volts at two or three amps. But I'd rather just, again, generate it from this uh, chunky 12 volt power supply and use the USB just for communication to the computer, not try to use it for um, power input, because again, you need a lot of current. You need like two amps, one amp, but let's say two to, to be safe. Um, and so normally, you know, if I'm trying to, uh, get, um, you know, five volts from a 12 volt power supply on something like, um, you know, a Metro or something, I'll use like an AZ 1117 series. These are very, very common. They'll give you about one, um, one amp, one, you know, 0.25 amps linear. And uh, they come in your standard SOT223 or SOT89. Um, they're very inexpensive. You can see they're about 10 cents a piece in quantity, but, and they come in fixed as well. So I can get, you know, I can, let's say, um, I want a fixed uh, five volt output. Let me show you a couple options. Yeah, so the AZ5. 10 cents a piece and they work great. You know, you can get one amp out and the voltage drop is pretty minimal. I think it's, yeah, about 1.3 volts. So definitely will get you current out of 12 volts. The problem is that the amount of heat we're dissipating out of this is uh, pretty high. So, you know, 12 minus five, seven volt drop times, you know, 1.2 two amps okay eight watts you're not going to easily dissipate eight watts from this little package you could do it with a to220 with a really big ass heat sink but you're definitely not going to be like this chip is not going to be happy it'll it'll give you five volts one amp maybe from like seven to nine volts okay but not from 12 even though the um voltage rating can go up to 15 and that's something to watch out for like when i was like younger and i was starting out i was like oh it says I can do 15, it'll give me five at one amp. Like it should, it should work, right? But it just because the the uh, technical limits let you do it doesn't mean the thermal limits will match. So for this kind of situation, this is where you would want a buck converter. This is a perfect example of you want a high voltage convert to low and you and you 
can't dissipate that much power. Also, it's a bit of a waste, right? I have to provide both five and 12 volts to, you know, a, a disk to power, uh, Apple disk to floppy drive. So I don't want to like linearly lose two amps from my 12 volt power supply into the five volt regulator, even if I did have a gigantic heat sink, because I still need two amps from the 12 volt as well. So, you know, if I use a buck converter, I can draw 400 milliamps from the 12 volt. I just need a less power, a less big power supply. So cost, power, everything savings, the buck converter is the way to go. So um, let's look at a, a DC DC buck converter and what you got. There's a lot of options. So there's just FYI, don't forget, they're switching controllers and switching regulators and switching converter like there's there's like a lot of things that sound very very similar so these converters tend to be modules and there's nothing wrong with using modules sometimes you're like ah, i don't want to go through like getting inductors and stuff you can get uh you know these, this chunky module from spark fun or you can get this you know plug-in style and there's nothing wrong with these um uh, they can be very inexpensive however you know i want to keep it low cost um and i'm not sure the power requirements here aren't too high so let's do um a regulator that will also regulate the output the controllers by the way usually you need to connect up a separate um transistor and these are often used for extremely high current um or extremely high voltages where you need the transistor to be spec for some you know maybe 40 50 volts or whatever um and you wouldn't get that with a regulator but 12 to 5 that's pretty common by the way like you're gonna see there's thousands of options so the regulator will give me a regulated output so many options thirty thousand, uh, and a lot of them are in stock too so let's look at only the active ones and let's look at the ones that are normally stocked and let's exclude the marketplace ones this gets us down to like a paltry seven thousand options okay and uh you know definitely there's there's tons and there's in stock. It's amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. So we want surface mount because I'm going to pick and place it onto this board. Um, I want it to be definitely not negative. I want it to be positive, but sometimes we're positive or negative, whatever. I'll just select all of these. So all positive. And then I want, I only need one output. Um, although, you know, it could be interesting um, if I did need a lot of current at three volts. I could get a dual output that would give me 12 to 5 and 12 to 3, but I don't actually need that much current at 3 volts. I'm going to just toss an LDO on there um, to, con to convert the 5 volts to 3 volts because I only need like at the most 50, maybe 100 milliamps. Not worth getting another uh, more complicated um, buck setup going on. Okay, so let me apply. I didn't even get rid of that many. There's so many options. Um, okay. So the next uh, thing is, do I want synchronous rectifier or not? So normally I would say, you know, oh, I don't mind putting a, a diode in. I'll show you the freewheeling diode. Um, I, you know, I picked uh, this old design that I had. So like this design with the TPS 5100, there is a freewheeling diode here, um, but you know, it's another component and these diodes are not inexpensive. They're, you know, 10, 10 15 cents so let's go with yes let's do you know a synchronous rectifier um why not save one component also means usually there's a true disconnect um between input and output usually uh, at least it does with the boost converters okay and then i definitely want not boost i want buck only so I'll select those okay there's really you know Almost everything will do what I want. Voltage input, the minimum. Well, um, it's going to be 12 volt input. So let's make sure that I can handle um, 12 volt or less. And then uh, input maximum. Let's make sure the maximum can be whoops, 14 volts or higher. I'm going to go to 150. Who cares? Let's see if that, okay, now we're getting down to 2,600. Um, let's look for only ones that are tape and reel. Just, you know, if I'm, I'm going to put this on the pick and place, I might as well get, you know, avoid the 
did you reel and cut tape version or, or uh, tray versions? Okay. And I think like that's pretty good. Voltage outputs. Um, they all kind of cover five volts. So, you know, I mean, again, this is like one of the most common um, converters. All right, so let's uh, let's look at the pricing quantity for a thousand pieces. That likes to like to give me a sense and get yeah, 2000 options. There's a lot of options, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, and then current output, duh, forgot the most important thing. Um, so the motors on these, um, they are usually spec'd for one amp, but, um, you know, I want to make sure I have plenty of, um, space in my, my power uh, budget. So I'm going to make the current output or the switch output be, uh, two amps or more, because while this is, um, this floppy, these floppies are one amp. There could be older ones that are less efficient and they could spike up and maybe draw like two amps. So let's do two amps and up 50 amps is kind of bonkers, but we'll see. Okay. So now, now we're doing good. Okay. So lots of in stock options. And one thing I noticed is there's a couple of, uh, you know, popular winners here. There's the AP 622 series from Diodes Inc. And notice that um, buck converters are really inexpensive, um, like 13 cents, 10 cents, about the same price as the LDO, which is another thing. It's like by the time you add the heat sinking to your linear regulator, um, because you have to get a separate heat sink, it could be the same price as just getting, this is a synchronous buck. So all I need is the input capacitance, output capacitance, and a couple of inexpensive passives um, to set the output voltage and, um, you know, an inductor. But the inductors are usually, you know, maybe 10, 10, 15 cents. This is very inexpensive. Um, and there's a lot of good options. There's three volt out, sorry, three amp out, two amp out. I did see like, there's a lot of like, there's the TPS, five six two two zero two and then the tps five, six two two zero seven and i was like what's the difference between these two and um so i opened up the data sheets because I was, I was expecting this to this week and i was like what is the difference between these two so a lot of it is um the accuracy of the output feedback and also the frequency um these are 580 and of course the lower the frequency, the more efficient, but the bigger the inductor. So if you want a small inductor, you'll want higher frequency, but usually get lower efficiency. So it's a kind of a trade-off, but um, 600 kilohertz isn't too bad. And also the voltage range input and output. So this is 4.317. These are actually kind of very similar. I don't even know. What are the differences between the two? And then, yeah, I don't even know. Soft start, hiccup mode, non-latch. I don't know the difference between the two, these two. Pre-bias function, I don't know. You can also check out on um, TI. These seem like almost identical. This is a thing, I wish there was a little bit more clear what the, the differences are between the two. Um, but the second digit, so there's five six, which is the TPS five six, which is the series, and then two is two amp, three is three amp. So at the same price, you can also get a three amp version, by the way. Um, there's also this the six two two zero one. Let me see the data sheet. Yeah, so this output output range is 0.76 to seven volts. And this is 0.8 to 7. So like there's this slight, they all clearly they're all very, very similar. They have the same um, FETs inside and the same kind of configuration and pinout. Um, but they have slightly different uh, pin numbers. I don't know. Some of them maybe have different compensation on the inside. All of them look pretty good though. Um, I think... I'm, you know, I'm one of those people who I, I definitely can be convinced by what the crowd is doing. So I actually decided of all these, I think the diodes one is good, but I kind of like this one just because these two, because both of these have um, like 100,000 and 20,000 in stock. So they're very promising. 
you could also go to the power designer which is what if you want like more specific component selection and what i put in here is the vn like 10 volts to 14 volts and the output 5 volts and then you know 1.5 amps and then uh let's just say low cost and the ti uh web bench will generate it'll actually you, you'll see the same part number show up it'll it'll calculate for you your inductors um the about capacitance that you want for you know ideal stability and the feedback um resistors thankfully you don't have to compensate the design so I'll let this run in the mean in the meantime it'll generate the designs but i think that this one is kind of what i'm going to go with the tps 56 2202 or 2201 and you can see here's the um my screen is very small but you can see um it generated of this same family the 563 563 56 so it goes up to four amps um it likes to i will say that the um, ti web bench likes to kind of give you a, a bigger than maybe necessary uh power budget um but you can follow this and you can see like you know entire bomb cost of like 51 cents it's a really good deal these are also um higher frequency chips it looks like the 56 22 is of the 202 but they're all good i think this whole family will probably work quite nicely very simple very small and fairly good efficiency v out five volts you know up to two amps about 92 percent which is about as good as you're going to get so yeah i think that this is what i'm going to go with the tps 56 two two series so i'm going to get this into my design and then next week um we'll do the e-fuse for protection of this chip to make sure that you don't get more than about 12 14 volts coming in and that's a great search